How's it going guys? I want to show you a project that I'm really excited to share and that is a DIY awning for the side of my truck. So if you're in California or you're anywhere where you have sun, having an awning on the side of your truck uh, when you're out camping is a game changer. So I've wanted one for a while but there's, I don't know, there's a, there's some cheap ones out there that are affordable like from a hundred bucks to a couple hundred bucks. Um, but they look kind of flimsy and the thing is they take a little while to set up. Having something that can set up really fast and take down really fast, don't have to worry about weather like wind, rain, uh, mostly wind, super nice, means you're going to use it all the time. So this is the design I came up with, it's heavily inspired by um, Kinsman's awnings, um, check them out. Also Aluma, Aluma Cab has, um, has an awning similar to this. Basically there's a lot of people making these awnings, but most of them are around the $2,000 range, which is kind of ridiculous. I mean, they're very high quality, very great products, but um, not something I could afford. So this is a 270 awning that I made for just a couple hundred bucks, and I'm excited to show you guys. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's talk about materials. The bag is made from vinyl coated polyester, basically a truck tarp. So if you Google truck tarp material, you're gonna find this stuff. Um, I got it at a local um, fabric store in town along with the zipper. Um, just raw materials, cut it and made it to fit. Um, but uh, I was trying to think of some other details about it. It's 18 ounce, really heavy duty, waterproof, perfect for this type of application. And if you buy it online, you can get it pretty cheap. I think I paid um, about 60 bucks because I had to buy double the amount of fabric because it only comes in um, comes in 50 inch width and I needed um, a much larger piece so I had to buy double the amount. I can make two bags which is fine since I'm actually going to make another one of these but yeah so the bag material vinyl coated, vinyl coated polyester and then just the heaviest zipper that I had available from there so this guy just comes back and around and then push this over just to clear the hinge. And next part is this strap. The strap is actually from an old car seat <laughs> and this buckle they had at the uh, at the um, fabric store as well. And you in, using a sewing machine, just kind of put them two together. Now the strap actually holds the arms of the awning to the side of the truck. Um, some other designs have like a fourth arm in the awning or just like a framework that holds the whole um, side of the awning to the truck. Mine doesn't have that since it's made to attach to the basket rack. I was able to get rid of that, makes it a little lighter, makes it a little slimmer. Um, and I just have an aluminum rod inside the bag that extends out so that when I drop this guy and pull on these, the bag is staying up with that aluminum rod. So undo that strap, material drops out, and then we have, um, pull this open a little bit. You're gonna grab your inside corner and it attaches to my roof rack with these little snaps here like this and they're just cinch cinch up like that. I actually salvage these straps from a uh, kid like a mirror for the back of your seat to look back at your kids throwing it away so I cut these off. They could be a little bit longer and it'd be a little easier to use but since I had these lying around they seem to work perfect so let's go up here and I'll show you where it clips in. So I just clip it around here and then leave it loose as you're opening it up. Go around, grab the other far end which has the other same buckle. Pull. All the way over here. And this buckle could definitely be a little bit longer because it's right at the limit of, uh, at the end of it. And it would be easier to do that. That just goes there that snapped in and then I've got one little arm here to lift up the center I think I'd like to add an arm here and also there um, but this one does the trick for now really nice helps you shed the water on top um, and gives you that loftier feel kind of like uh, vaulted ceilings in a house it just feels a lot bigger this is um, this little arm actually uses um, skateboard bearings <laughs> right out of a skateboard wheel 
um, and that way it doesn't cut into the material as it rolls out. I just added some duct tape um, just to help keep that from wearing out. And then, um, yeah, let's cut and talk about the materials. All right, so materials. Um, I chose to use three quarter inch by three quarter inch 16th wall steel tubing um, for a couple reasons. It's very lightweight and it's very affordable. I got 20 feet of this tubing. You, you buy it in 20 foot lengths at the steel supply for $10 for 20 feet. So this project has, um, I think, 60 feet so you need three sticks to do this um, so that totaled to be 30 bucks for your metal so very cheap um, the bearings are skateboard bearings you can buy them cheap on Amazon or you could do what I did and salvage them out of an old skateboard so I didn't actually pay for those and you get bones red <laughs> bearings for this lifter arm and it's also bearing uh, bone skateboard bearings inside this pipe this is just black um, pipe, I believe it's the one inch pipe from the hardware store. Um, would have been cheaper to buy in uh, lengths, but these are actually eight inch pieces that I cut the threaded ends off, and then you just bore it out a little bit and you can fit a skateboard bearing right inside there. Um, the hinge itself is uh, 3 16 steel, and this top and bottom piece were actually the hangers, the metal hangers for smitty built nerf bars like side steps on the side of my truck when i took them off and built the uh the sliders i had this lying around and the shape was pretty much perfect for me to be able to lay out the hinge design so 3 16 steel on here and then also a 3 16 steel plate on the rack itself so they kind of made up like this the holes are there you just put two really heavy these are uh, half inch bolts that i had lying around as well right through there so um this guy's super strong. You can actually um, hang on it. <laughs> you can do pull-ups on it. So it's super strong, um, which means you don't have to worry about the wind kind of ripping it or bending it, which is one of the major advantage of having something like this. Sets up super fast, super strong, and actually only weighs, I think, about 40 pounds. So that's the metals, how the hinges, uh, how the bearings are working in... <laughs> How the bearings are working. Cut! Cut! Uh, how the <laughs> skateboard bearings fit inside the pipe. Now I want to show you a close-up of the actual hinge itself because that layout is pretty pretty important. Okay so here's a close look at the hinge. This part took a lot of thinking. It's really simple and once you understand it it makes sense um, and it's easy to replicate. Basically you have all your um, bars in the same line you know just spaced out of, as if they were next to each other. So they all fit together when they're closed. But um, lengthwise, they're laid out just a little different. So you got the first one here, you gotta set your last one, your middle one back from the first one a little bit so that this arm can open up um, as far as you want it. And then this last one has to be really far back so that this arm can go all the way around and make that all the way out there. And that's why you gotta have this one that far out. Otherwise, if it was say right here, this arm would only open, you know, off just to the side of the truck. It might land like right here. So the farther you put this back, the more opening angle you're gonna get with this middle arm. And yeah, that is the basics of a hinge you need for a 270 awning. Okay, let's take a quick look at the tarp itself. This is actually just a Harbor Freight tarp. It's $9, it's a heavy duty, um, I think it's 14 millimeter tarp. I might be wrong, it might be at 11, but I think it's 14 millimeter. It's ripstop, only costs nine bucks. And um, it is an 11 by eight foot tarp, I believe. Um, don't have to cut it to use it. I cut the center section out, makes it a lot easier to open the whole thing. Um, but if you wanted, you could just buy one of these tarps and put it on through the bolt there in the eyelet without having to modify it and you could run it so yeah that's kind of what i was hoping for i've used a different tarp in the past and it was more expensive but i think this is just a really neat option um, because it's very accessible for a lot of people so 
that is the tarp I'm using. I do plan to try out some different tarps. I want to try a slightly bigger tarp. As you can see, this arm comes out a little farther because I did have a longer tarp on. The longer or the wider the tarp, the more this arm can swing out and the more coverage you get. So, but that is the tarp I'm using right now. So one of the best parts about having an awning like this is how quick it sets up and how quick you can tear it down. So pull off the side of the road uh, on a road trip, want to have lunch, whip this thing out, <laughs> you can put it right back really fast. So let me show you how quickly you can put it away. Just unclip the strap on this side, drop the middle guy. Everything hangs down like this. So this comes out the outside. Then tucks into the bag here. Now, everything you see here is the first kind of the prototype. It's the first time I built this, so I do plan on making one that's a little smaller, fix up some of the little inconsistencies I have in this, and uh, that'll make it even quicker. But you just grab this and roll it up as tight as you want. in here and then you can cinch this up as well so this bag could actually be smaller if i made the arms a little thinner the tarp is so uh, thin itself that you could make this thing a lot smaller that's essentially how quickly it takes to uh, put it away and that is the homemade do-it-yourself nine dollar tarp 270 degree overland under budget awning so hope you guys enjoyed this project. If you have questions, um, something I missed, something I didn't cover, leave them in the comments. If you're new to the channel, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. I'm blown away by how many subscribers we already have. We're over 2,000 right now, and I'm excited to um, keep growing and hopefully be able to have some more time to do more videos. So if you have something you want to see in future videos, let me know in the comments as well. Smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll be back with another project soon. Thanks guys.